Okay, so I'm starting now. Thank you for joining. So I'm um, Neil Armstrong and I work for Belibre. It's a small French, company, French and American company and we're specialized in embedded software engineering and uh, embedded Linux, open source Linux, upstream Linux, custom firmware, SOC support and product development. So first of all, I will talk about the initial state of the art of the AMLogic mainline support when we started working on it. So first of all, a small presentation of AMLogic SOC families and AMLogic in general. So this is more, it's a American Chinese company. We designed some multimedia SOCs for SOC top box, tablets and TV and projectors. And in the last year, they made a um, 64-bit ARM based family and the code names are GXBB, GXL, GXM that are commonly used in some well-known development boards and they also have some TV versions for, for TVs and projectors. And the older 32-bit families are presented here but are less supported. So briefly, how the most recent AMG SOC family uh, organized. So they had some quad Cortex A9 processors and they made the well-known S805, which was with Cortex A5. Uh, this generation could decode the 4K HT4. And last year, they made the S905 which is 64-bit A53 processor and can decode, decode, decode 404K H65. And the last, in the end of the year, they made two different SOCs, so the X version, which is the same as the 905, and the 9012, which is 8 Cortex A53, and has a better MADI core. And this generation, uses better DDR and can decode 4K, VP9 and DBit, 10 bit. That's quite huge. So there's a lot of products used on these free SOCs uh, mainly. You can find more information and the difference in the SOCs on Wikipedia. So we concentrated on the last generation of SOC, which is the 64 bit uh, SOCs. So they have one or two clusters of quad Cortex A33 up to 1.5 GHz or upper on the uh, 905. Uh, the 905 and 905X has the MADI 450 and the last us has the MADI, MADI T820. I come back later on this situation. Uh, they have HDMI 2 with a 4K HDR display. They can handle H64, H65, VP9, plus 10 bit decoding for VP9 and H65 hardware decoding, and can then do hardware encoding in H64 and in the later versions H65. They have gigabit internet, USB 2, Austin device. That's quite common. So well-known and well-bought products are here. You have the WETEC board here and here, which is really small. You have some Nextbox board and a lot of generic boards, which are really cheap and really functional. And you have uh, at least three community boards. There's a well-known art kernel Ojoid, the C1 with the previous generation 805 SOC and the C2, which is a real well-loved uh, development board, which has the 905 version. And the fresh one is the CADAS Vim, which uses the S905X version, which is a smaller and a similar version. So what, what is the Linux support point? AMLogic uses Linux for all the SOCs, uh, all of three and based on the Android uh, 3.10 and 3.14 uh, kernel and heavily changed 
but hopefully not like other SOC vendors, they made all their change in one directory, so it's far simpler to, uh, to find stuff, actually. This, this is a good point. Uh, for after stream support, it was, it was started uh, Linux 4.1, and some independent, independent hackers make, made the uh, initial support with the minimal booting, uh, UART, the minimal dev tree, and uh, only all the SOCs and very, very early ARM64 was supported. So they created a website and a lot of people are idling on the ERC, and we have a, a main list for Linux project. Those, this is the state of the art of when we started the, the work in 4.5. So what, we did, what was achieved and, uh, until since June last year? So this is a graph of the, all the work was done since things 4.1. This is as the small commits from, for the UART and the minimal uh, stuff, the pin control and the, the basics. And since 4.8, we started pushing uh, more advanced drivers and more support for uh, all the elements of the SOC. So the last revision, 4.10, is the highest. We pushed uh, nearly, nearly 60 commits and nearly 6,000 uh, lines change. A, a good a good work. So what Barry, Barry draws, does in this uh, uh, project, so we maintain and develop support for the SOC. Uh, Kevin Hillman is a well-known uh, ARM maintainer and does the ARM SOC uh, ma maintaining and development, along with an endless mobile uh, uh, employee, Carlo Kawan. They use also the I'm logic SOC for their own product. And uh, I got the maintenance chip of the DRM display, display driver. And what is great with the DRM uh, subsystem is that they added recently the, the, an experimental white git access to the DRM MISC git repository. When, when the patches are hacked by the maintainer, I can directly push the patches in the shared repository. So it's Kind of great. It's a very good experiment to directly push your Git, your Git commit, in something that will be merged automatically. So, it's a really great experiment, and I'm happy to experiment this with uh, the Amlogic uh, work. So, uh, like I said, uh, we concentrate our work on the 64-bit SOCs primarily, even if the hardware is really similar on the previous generation. So it will still work. So it evolved and the best, today the best uh, release is a 4.10. Like we did a demonstration, demonstration yesterday when we made the Quake Free Arena running on the last test uh, kernel revision. So mainly we, we pushed MMC, CPI for DVFS, the display, display driver and the USB for one of the SOCs. So, globally, the general I.O. was done. Was work was done. So we we worked the clock support in the clock framework uh, because the number of gates is huge, number of PLL is huge, like any modern multi multimedia SOC. Uh, we did we pushed the random generator, the watchdog driver. We modified the infrared decoder. We pushed the PWM which is a key element for uh, Wi-Fi, actually. We, man we modified the ASRC and the P SPI controller. So this is the basics and we are quite easy to do, but still need some testing and some work. So the, one of the first big point was to make work the SCPI for DVFS. So DVFS is you change the voltage of the uh, co uh, Cortex uh, cores uh, with the frequency changing. So nowadays, with the recent uh, ARM Cortex, ARM pushes to have a standard interface to change this, and, and they use it in the Juno uh, reference implementation. 
and they ask all the licenses to use a similar uh, uh, implementation. So globally, you have your Cortex A33 cluster, which is, has its own power domain, and it communicates with a Cortex M3 firmware, which has its own power domain. Nearly, it's uh, always on power domain. And you have a shared uh, memory and a link which is used, which is uh, provided by um, MH2, is a mailbox interface with only a single word to synchronize uh, communication. So it, seem, it seems a really good idea to have a common and stable firmware, except they gave, they gave early implementation of the SCP, SCPI uh, firmware to the partners like IMLogic or Rockchip. And they did, they, copy, they copied the, the implementation, they did, they did the, the work. But in the meantime, ARM reworked the protocol, changed the ordering of the uh, command numbers, and pushed it as print. So we had a problem. The protocols were different, and we needed to support a legacy protocol of SCPI along the modern SCP. So hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> Rockchip did the same error. So it was a good point to push uh, the legacy support. So globally, we use uh, a mailbox to synchronize. So ARM provides uh, documentation of what the mailbox should support. So they have their own implementation, which is in uh, AMBA device, so the, their own IP. So the, the licensee must uh, design their own IP, which should be similar as their IP. So it's uh, not very great, because every vendor with, uh, will develop their own their, their their IP. So it's not great, because they don't support the work chip did uh, use their own mailbox, which doesn't work the same as uh, the ARM implementation. So it will be a headache for them. So <laughs> sorry, guys. So MLogic did a very similar uh, support, but I need to rework the, I need to rework the uh, ARM driver, but I, need, I tried to integrate in the same driver the AMBA support and the platform server support, and it was a mess, absolute mess. And the maintainer told me, oh, yes, you, too, you should try, put the two, but you need to duplicate nearly uh, half of the driver. It was awful. So. Hopefully, I made a, made a clone of the driver, one for platform device, one for AMBA, and it's stupid, but uh, it works. So. And it's really ready for new uh, vendors for their implementation. So this was merged in uh, 4.9. So finally, we had SCPI support for the GXBB, for the S905 SOC. And because it's generic, is, this is a good point. Support for the two uh, next generation of SOCs was really simple. Only adding the correct node, adding the correct indices to the device tree, and up, you had SCPE and DVFS. So this is a good point of having a standard firmware interface, actually. So the next good, very important work was the EMC SD IOSD driver. Uh, the, they changed the hardware implementation between the S805 and S905, and uh, we need uh, a modern uh, driver to handle the, because the MMC uh, framework evolved a lot since uh, uh, 3.14. So we make a file driver based on based of the IMLogic implementation, and the hardware supports a lot of modern features for EMMC to uh, achieve a very, very high, high speed. SD card and SDIO. So the first version was really the simplest possible, only one bit or four bit for high speed and only up to 50 megahertz. But work is coming for to have a better bandwidth. So like I said, at the end of the year, uh, IMLogic published the, the, the next generation of products, so the GXL, GXM, which are really a variant of the, the first generation, the previous generation and have only uh, decoding uh, enhancements. So things are very close. We did a great rework of the device tree with a new hierarchical, uh, hierarchical 
DTS structure, which is possible with the S3, you can have a common DTSI and uh, include it in a sub architecture DSI. And the GXM is even closest to GXL, so you can even have a sub uh, the DTSI, which includes the GXL, which is in GX. So the rest we can add a lot of uh, simplicity to describe the very similar hardware, even uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. So the last uh, big feature we did need to support was the display driver. So uh, our target was to have a minimal uh, basic driver, so the the simplest to have is the CVBS composite output, which is simple but works. When uh, though here uh, Laurent Pichard did a great uh, DRM structure uh, graphic where you can DRM is a direct uh, rendering manager uh, in Linux, which handles all the graphic uh, uh, stuff. Now it's the future and we need to use it, so we use all the modern features to handle uh, the display uh, graphic. So globally, the DRM needs, it's separated in uh, four, four or five um, <coughs> concepts. You have the, the plane, the CRTC, which is the scanout of the, uh, the, the pixel, the encoder, which transforms, transforms the pixel uh, data in, in timings, and the connector, which handles the physical connector on the board. So globally, what we did, we mapped this with the internal hardware uh, blocks. So in the Amlogic implementation, they have uh, the whole stuff is the VPU, the video processing unit. Uh, for the plane management, they have the VIU, which is a video input unit. So they, have, they can have two OSDs and two video uh, inputs. They have a post-blend and a pre-blend to to be able to put video on top or under, underneath the OSDs. So we used only a single uh, plane here. And they have uh, uh, different encoders, so the interlace, the progressive, the LCD encoder, and so on. So this is a the simplest inter implementation we could, uh, could, uh, we could push to have the minimal DRM driver. And with this, with this, with this DRM driver implementation, you have access to anything when, when XORs natively, uh, Wayland, anything. So it was a, a good first start. And afterwards, um, for the, the GXBB905 uh, SOC, only had a, a gigabit internet interface with external uh, FI, and the GXL and GXM now embeds the uh, 100 Ethernet uh, file, so a small work was to support this file. Hopefully, uh, the network uh, API is really uh, great, and uh, it's really easy to support uh, such uh, such a custom file. So this is the work we achieved until uh, the end of the year for the 4.10 uh, release, and this is what is uh, in work in progress actually to support more features uh, of, the, of the Amlogic SOCs. So obviously, we need some performance optimization because uh, the uh, EMC and SD card are quite slow today. Uh, so we need to support the double data read mode. So we, we, we can get data on the, the two, uh, on, the, on the, all the, oh, the data on the double data read. Uh, we can support the high speed uh, 200 and 400 of calibration. So it's, you go very fast, you can go up to two, 400 megabits on EMMC, quite very fast. Uh, and you, they made an um, uh, end version of the DMA with uh, a scattered ever, a scattered ever compatible, compatible DMA. We can, you, you can push multiple buffers in a chain. So we can, and um, a hobbyist made the optimization and it achieved up to 140 megabytes on EMMC which is really fast because now it's like uh, ten, 10 times uh, less. So thanks, uh, Heiner, for all your work. <laughs> so it's, it's why also what you uh, pushing upstream is important because you can have some, um, some work done by a random guy and it's really valuable because we don't have a lot of time to work on this feature. It's not urgent for us. 
uh, the other point was the um, ARM Mali in integration and uh, the way to use it to have a decent 3D uh, acceleration. So globally, here is how it's architected on, in hardware. So globally, you have, this is the IP that ARM licenses, so you can configure it. This is the 450 uh, MP3, so you have three fragment processors, a, a vector processor, you have a PMU that handles its own uh, memory uh, um, power, power domain, and MMU and two cages. So all this is a, a big block. You don't need to know how it's integrated. And the uh, GPL driver uh, implement all this in the driver. So they reinvented the EMMU, they reinvented the cache operation, and they, re they reinvented the PMU management. So. So how we integrate in the system? So you have two physically uh, separated uh, uh, IP. So you have the SOC video processing unit. It's the same for other SOC vendors. You have uh, the homemade uh, unit. And you have the MALI driver that access the DDR, DDR, DDR memory. So on the, on the kernel space, you have the DRM framework that handle all the graphics. This is OK. It's open source and integrated, OK? You have the MADI GPL driver that handles the hardware. It's, it's only an interface with the user space uh, closed source uh, library. And for the other way, you have anything open source because the DRM interface is open source standard and uh, in development, so uh, it's OK. So the problem is uh, they only, the, it's complex to explain, the MALI GL implementation need to be uh, configured and built by the SOC vendor. The ARM does not give a generic GL library. So you need to ask your uh, SOC vendor to build a version based on the last release they give, which is buggy, obviously. So it's a complex situation because you need a different shared library for Xorg, Wayland, and frame buffer and Android. So they need, they need to target at least four different shared libraries and debug the four of them in every uh, XOR version, Wayland version, and uh, every frame buffer situation, which is uh, complex and uh, wide. So the situation is very complex and uh, ARM doesn't help at all, actually. So they provide the GPL uh, driver, like I said. So it's a GPL and in kernel, so not in kernel, but it's built quite easily. So I had no issue to build it, actually. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Free Electron Maxime, uh, I made a clean platform support for the uh, my driver because it's rather complex to use. The data biddings are not very good. So thanks to Maxime also, he pushed that, that some upstream data binding. So thank you. <laughs> so I, I pushed. Um, uh, uh, a version of the driver for MLG on my GitHub. And for the last, last uh, generation of FOC, the JXM, they use the T820 MALI uh, IP, which is uh, really powerful. They have shaders, they support uh, modern APIs, but still with the same concept of uh, lab shared library. So, and even worse, some S3 vendors don't even have access to uh, the XORG or Wayland uh, libraries. They only have the Android libraries. They can't provide the XORG library at, at all. So it's, it's kind of a shame from them because they have a very powerful uh, graphic acceleration uh, IP and only Android can use it actually. So there is some hope, but half hope to hack it using libibris, which uh, use because um, Android uh, GL layer is rather, rather generic, and uh, you can wrap it around a, a library called libibris and use it on Wayland to have a proper acceleration. But it's still a shame to have a hack uh, for this, actually. So I say you need to configure it for your hardware, which is uh, stupid. But, uh, they, don't, they don't want to integrate in Mesa and uh, to see the uh, secret that everybody, everybody, everybody knows how the hardware works, but... Uh, 
So for the video display, uh, we need some work to have a better experience and uh, to achieve uh, video decoding, actually. So globally, the work ongoing now and will be pushed for the 4.12 Linux will be the HDMI controller and fee support. Uh, next, we will need, the need to uh, accelerate the cursor with the cursor plane. We need support the overlay planes to push video uh, on top or underneath the, the planes. We need to have OSD scaling and overlay scaling to uh, scale the video and the primary plane. So this is the final, hopefully, uh, DRM architecture of the Heimlich driver with the secondary OSD that can act on as, uh, as, a, as a, a cursor display uh, and the two video uh, input overlay. So you can, this is the plane where you can push your video frames and put it on top, underneath each uh, uh, plane, OSD plane. So support for the pre-blend, so we, you can blend the two video uh, planes before blending it, it on the two OSD planes. So it is quite common and every SOC vendor does similar stuff. Uh, for the output, we need to support uh, extended uh, encoder for progressive video to support uh, HDMI, uh, HDMI uh, uh, transceiver. So it's a Synopsys uh, transceiver and support the HDMI connector with HPD and uh, added uh, I2C port. So like a lot of vendors, they use uh, the Synopsys Designware HDMI IP, uh, IP, which is very common, but absolutely not supported by Synopsys. Nobody has documentation and only the SOC vendors. So, and it's really common, uh, Freescale use it. Uh, uh, and uh, so it's a hard way to uh, manage a driver without knowing what are the registers and what they do. So hopefully it's, it works like a charm on the AMLogic SOCs, but like genetic IPs, you can, you can integrate it like you want. So you have the, 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 the controller which has videos that comes in one point and outputs in uh, nearly TMDS. So you need a file, a file that converts it in actual TMDS signals to go on the cable. But the file, it, you can be custom. You don't need to, to buy the Synopsys file if you want. So uh, the, gen the hardware is generic. But they no way, they, they no software, no documentation from Synopsys. No, they could provide a simplified documentation to know what signals must come in, go out, and the minimal registers. So we need to uh, rework all the, rework some uh, part of the DWV HDMI driver, which is here, which is upstream right now, to support more different integration because other SOC vendors does this actually. So, and HPD detection is also custom and it's normal because the IP uh, lets do, do this. And uh, the CEC is ended by uh, custom hardware that can be supported because now the CEC framework has been moved, moved out of staging, so it's the next, next, next good work. So patches are ready and uh, we target uh, 4.12 for this part. For the DRM planes, uh, or the current situation, we only have a single primary plane, so uh, when you move the cursor on, on XORG, uh, you need to uh, re recompose compose every frame, so it's not the perfect situation. Don't have overlay, so we cannot show video, actually, even non-accelerated, and no cursor plane. So we plan to push the uh, scaling so you can use the primary planes and 1080p and the real output in 4K, so it lowers your bandwidth, DDR bandwidth. So this is uh, in plan. Add overlay planes to support the classic uh, YUV and uh, NV uh, uh, plane support, which is uh, outputted by the video decoder. So the overlay plane scaling is necessary because we can change the, the video uh, scale. And at the cursor plane. So this is uh, in work, but maybe after for the 12. On the audio part, 
The SOC supports uh, SPD, SPDIF, SPDIF, IDUSS, and PCM input output. So, quite common uh, here, also. So, uh, a basic IDUS support has been written, and we work on uh, supporting the other input and output interface. And, like you see, maybe, uh, so yesterday at the demo, we have uh, IDUS working over HDMI, so uh, it's a good point. Everything works. It was like it was a worse situation, but uh, it's quite easy. So all the support is planned for maybe one or two releases. Um, one of the greatest work we need to achieve is the video decoding and encoding acceleration. So the, it's one of the best features of the, these SOCs. They have a powerful uh, dec hardware uh, decoder. And uh, hopefully, we need we we'll manage to have a proper video for Linux uh, driver to support uh, encoding and decoding, and hopefully, uh, support uh, VP9 uh, 10 bit decoding upstream. That's, it's a dream, maybe it will uh, happen. And I know the Kodi and the Libre guys are really uh, want to us to support this, so it's one of the priority work uh, for the next two releases. So finally, I will talk about of the community around the main, uh, upstream uh, Linux because it's important. We didn't make this alone. We uh, have uh, had a lot of help from uh, developers. Um, the Ojobit C2 is a, a well-liked board, and prefer, 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 people prefer this board instead of the Raspberry Pi. It start, it, because it's more powerful, it has better output, a better uh, a GPU. And hard kernels provide a nearly usable desktop, so uh, it's uh, well known. So, and because this is open source, a lot of projects that was uh, modified for Raspberry Pi works very well on this platform because they all share the common pitfalls of uh, ARM, uh, ARM embedded platforms. So uh, for, uh, for the hacker community, you have a, we have a few uh, hackers who push regularly and test uh, the mainland patches. It is really fundamental for your work because you can, can test everything alone. And for them, a USB support was made by uh, uh, Martin so on his spare time. And he pushed as well the ADC, which is uh, small but really useful for this kind of SOC. So they, they keep pushing some great uh, test features, and, uh, and we thank them for this. So I finished my presentation of the current situation of Amlogic SOC support. So if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask me. Please repeat. <laughs> uh, it, um, so, is there an estimate for when you might have Molly 820 support in the kernel? As a kernel module or? Mm -hmm. uh, or anything. <laughs> I started working on the kernel module actually. So, the, the code to support uh, the 450 and the T, T820 was nearly similar, but I need testing, but I don't have the uh, user space library to test, so it's quite limited. I will see the hardware initializing, but n nothing to use it, actually, so. Someday. Someday, hopefully, yeah. Can you provide a uh, pretty brief description how we can update to a newer version of a Mali uh, a driver? Let's say you have an old driver, you want to uh, update to, a, to the latest to a newer driver. So what, what parts are involved, who or what uh, the uh, companies are involved 
So what, what, what parts you involve in it? Okay, so for the Mali uh, support, you need to have the kernel driver and the user page shell library that has the same version. It's very important. So for this, you need to have the SOC vendor to build the lastest version. And so you can take the lastest uh, GPL driver. So you depend on the SOC vendor to actually take the new version from ARM, change it for the hardware, and build it and distribute it. So it depends uh, which, what are the status, what is the status on the SOC vendor actually on Mali. Uh, so this is going to involve three parts. Uh, the first one is kernel driver, right? That's from ARM, isn't it? It's from ARM, but you have a, a platform integration support, a small C file to actually uh, adapt to the hardware. But so this must be ported from the previous version, uh, actually. Yes. The second part is the libmali.so. Yeah, which is... Oh, well, where does that come from? From the SOC vendor. Okay. Then the, the, there's a third part that is the, the for example, this xorg, uh, like frame buffer uh, dot library. What well, where does that come yeah, from? Yeah, it's not really tied to, it's kind of generic, so... But yes, uh, you, you, for Mali, for XORG uh, acceleration, you need a special uh, driver. So you have uh, FB Turbo on uh, all winner SOCs. You, want the, you have the ARM SOC uh, driver used on uh, plenty of ARM SOC because uh, you have the same situation with PowerVR, actually. So it's, yeah, two, three parts, but you need to find the proper XORG driver that works well. You need to find the lastest SOC vendor uh, distributed uh, library and make work the driver, the GPL driver. So the X work, X work part is generic, will be enough, or it has to be specific from a SOC provider or similar party? Sorry? For the X work part, will that be open source generic? Yeah. Code yeah. will be enough? Yeah, yeah. Uh, ARM. Uh, distributes their own uh, XORG driver called the Mali uh, driver for XORG, but it depends on the UMP uh, driver, which is not uh, always built in the child library and uh, uh, the GPL driver in the kernel. So this situation is very complex, in, in plenty of uh, different uh, uh, parts that are not really fitted uh, together. So it depends how the SOC vendor builds the child library which is in no, unknown, so... <laughs> okay, so you don't have any question more. I will stop here. Thank you very much for attending.